Hello, this is Yong T of Chapel Cottage Studios. We're going to do a picture today, the same photograph that I have done in the last two videos for you. We did this beautiful little seascape on the Pembrokeshire Coastal Path. We did it first in pastels and then we did the same one in acrylics. And today I'm going to do the same little scene in charcoal and chalk. It's a very good uh, test to give yourself to do the same scene in a few different medium and just see how they react differently and you get a different sort of feel to your picture. So today's is in charcoal and chalk. The charcoal that I use is willow charcoal. That's the little burnt sticks of, of willow. Not compressed charcoal, not charcoal pencil, both of which you can use but I don't find them as easy to smudge and you definitely can't rub them out. I like willow charcoal. The chalk I'm using is blackboard chalk. Cheap and cheerful, you can get a box for 99p and there'll be like 20 in it. Just children's chalk or blackboard chalk. And the paper is Fabriano Tiziano pastel paper. This one is in a lovely dark grey which will show up the black of the charcoal and will also show up the white of the chalk. So we've got pastel paper, Fabriano Tiziano in a dark grey, piece of willow charcoal and a piece of blackboard chalk and that's all the equipment that you're going to need so this one's a really easy one to have a go at. To begin let's draw it out and again the same as in the other pictures I'm changing it slightly because I don't find this a very nice composition. So if this is the first time you've come to do this, I'll talk you through it again. I'm making this dip in the cliff a lot less central and moving it over to the left because just in the centre doesn't work so well. And the little path down here, I'm also moving over to the left because it will work better in the picture. As it is in the centre, there's too much here and not enough here, so we're moving it over. I'm going to reduce the, the stony beach a little bit and take that backwards. And I'm going to take these down a bit because they take up a bit too much picture. So first let's draw it out. My little banks at the front, which are going down quite a long way. And the little dip is going to be less than halfway and the banks on the other side going up over there. My little path which actually sneaks behind there we are I show you sneaks behind the little grassy bit here is going to come further over and the, the curve in the path is going to go right up the top just because it looks nicer. No reason other than that. And if I put down the next front bit here, the path can wind around it and come down to the front. Then these cliffs, I'm going to just push back a little bit because I'm afraid of them coming right to halfway. And halfway is not a good look. So I'm just going to push them back a little bit. Nice little shape on the end of them. And there's another cliff that comes down in front by there. And take them off up there and the sea is going to end somewhere by there. You can, when you're doing this, when you're using charcoal, in order to get the top of your sea completely flat, there's nothing wrong with using a ruler, measuring down from the top of your page and getting a straight line. And that's our drawing out done. Oh, I've used the little stick of willow charcoal to draw out because if you go wrong, you can just rub it out with your hand. Okay, so let's get it drawn out. Let's get going with the sky. I'm going to use my piece of chalk and I'm going to use it on the side like so, so we don't get any lines. And I'm simply going to block in my cloud shapes. Oh, by the way, my whole square is about 13 inches. I have no idea what that is in centimetres. I am a dinosaur. So you can see here I'm making cloud shapes just the same as I did in the pastel. 
and just the same as I did in the acrylic. And I'm just trying to get my cloud shapes to be a little different everywhere, making a nice line across the sea. I'm going to go through here. I'm only rubbing gently at the moment with this piece of chalk. I'm going to get lots of chances to fiddle around with it later. Get some sky in up there, a little bit going up here. So basically I'm putting in the clouds and leaving some of the dark bits out. Following the lines of the cliff. And once I've got just one bit on, I'm going to rub it in just like I did with some of the pastels. Actually, I don't think we did much rubbing in with the pastels, but with this charcoal and chalk, it's lovely. And you straight away get a feeling of some clouds. And once you've got a base on there, I can bring up some sharper edges for some of the clouds. When you're trying to make some sharp edges on your clouds, just think broccoli. If you draw heads of broccoli, you're going to get clouds. You need, a, you need this lots of little curves rather than one big curve. That's what always makes me think of broccoli. So what we want is some bits that are soft and some bits that are hard. And I'm going to bring up the edges of all these clouds, soften some of them, leave some of them hard. That one's going to perhaps go through here, join up with the next one. So we've got a soft area and a dark area, uh, sorry, soft area and a hard edged area. You can put on as many layers <coughs> as you wish. Oh, sorry, that was a dog barking. Somebody going past outside. And my little dog is in here. So I apologise for any barking. Let's carry on up here. Do a little bit up here. You can do this for as long as you wish. Fiddle around with the sky. If you have a look at the shapes of the clouds, they tend to peter out onto a horizontal line, but you mustn't make the horizontals too obvious. You see, I'm making this one come down and through in a bit of a diagonal to join the ones underneath it. Soften some of the edges, maybe put a bit of a hard edge on top. Clouds don't stay out of each other's way. And then you can work your way through the sky, layering it up, always leaving some dark, leaving some hard edges, softening some edges. So carry on, finish layering up the sky until you're happy with it. No charcoal on here, just chalk and the paper is our dark areas of sky. Okay, so I've rubbed out a bit of the white here. I felt like there was a bit too much of a white band across there. And your rubber will pick up this chalk quite easily. So I've made myself a sort of a gap here where the light of the sea is going to go underneath it. And I've just made some harder edges here and there. And I've softened a little bit here and there. When you've got a big area to soften, you make a fist and you use this fatty pad here. I have a very fatty pad. Okay, moving on, let's do the sea. Really quick and easy, the sea in charcoal and chalk. I used a ruler earlier and got the top line of my sea really straight. And now I'm going to do that straight line in the chalk. And if you can leave the teeniest little dark line over it, even better. See, there's just a tiny little smidge of a dark line showing. Now I'm going to bring up all horizontal lines bring up the shine on the sea. This time I'm using the tip of the chalk because I want really, really hard white and all my lines are horizontal. And I'm thinking about the shine coming down the sea, getting a little bit less down here. And then I'm going to change my chalk to using the side instead of the tip 
and I'm going to just lighten some of it down here. You can see when I'm using it on the side, it's a much gentler light than when I use it on the tip. There we are, and again, like we did before, I'm going to come across and soften some of it. And once it's softened, I'm going back in with the hard white on the tip to get the centre in. Take some of them right out, you don't want it too obvious, this centre shape. Now, to get the shine, and the little bits of waves, you're just going to use a little tip of the pastel, if you re of the, ch oh, sorry, of the chalk. If you remember when we used acrylics and when we used pastels, we just took some little squiggly lines through. And I'm going to do just the same with a little sharp edge of the chalk. Edges of a couple of waves coming through. And then you're going to hit it. You know, sometimes you need to hang on to the board to do this. Hit it with the tip of the chalk to get the light on the seam. And try not to make them too regular. We always want to make everything very, very regular. And you've really got to try and get sort of random lights on it. All the way down to the little field and path in the foreground. I'll just do a couple up here. You don't want to go too far up because this is miles and miles and miles away and you wouldn't even see the twinkles back there. But we can go a little way up and I might just make a bit more definite lines across it here and there. And there we are, easy peasy, there's the sea done. So that's the C finished, really quick and easy the C. Now we're going to move to this background cliff here. And I'm taking my charcoal, I've actually chosen a slightly thicker piece of willow charcoal now, so that we can use that on its side as well and use it to block in. But first of all I'm just going to come back in and find the edge of the cliff, which has sort of gone a little bit, but hey, we can get it back by there. The bottom of the cliffs I'm going to put in quite dark with my charcoal and just the same again as we did with the pastel and we did with the acrylics. It's going to go up the cliff and make some shapes and you're just thinking about the lie of the land as it goes up the cliffs. I'm putting some dark at the base. I think the foreground one is going to go up over there going to look really scruffy for now, don't worry about it. Get some dark up there so it's a contrast to the sky. Oh, I've lost my shape there. There we are. Let's go back in. And now I'm going to get my chalk and using that on the side, I'm going to come across this and it's going to blend it into a nice pale grey. And I'm going to leave some of that dark at the bottom smush it in a little bit, ever so gently actually, because charcoal lifts really, really easily. And you can use your finger as well to smush it a little bit. Go back to my charcoal. Charcoal lifts off the paper really, really easily. As soon as you touch it, it will go pale. So you really have to sort of think about what you're doing, where you want to leave it dark. And you just keep working along on it making cliffy shapes. The lovely thing about it is that any time you don't like it, you can just lift it. And then I'm going to go back to my chalk and I'm just going to get some of those nice lines going up and down the cliff. Nothing other than they look really nice, which is all you need really. And a little bit of black lines as well with the tip of the charcoal. Get some of those fissures in the, in the cliff. Oh, that's a good word. That's my word for today, fissures. There we are. I don't want it too dark and it may be that I have to grey it down when I do the foreground. Let's go straight in here and come out horizontal and start to get the stony beaching that we can see here. 
I'm not going to put as much as is on here and I'm definitely going to leave some of that white sea going in, tide coming in and filling in little rock pools. So I'm just using my charcoal, taking it horizontally. I think my cliff ends there somewhere. Horizontally right up to them and we can go back in with the chalk again make some of those little rock pools. Do be careful that you don't make them all the same size. Always tempting. And a little bit of light around the bottom of the cliff. And just play around with it a little bit until you like it. And there we are. There's the cliffs in the distance. Say in that hang on one second. I'm going to put some little darker bits here, some little stones coming out into the sea. Separate little stones, maybe we'll have one right out there. Okay, there we are, Cliffs and Beach. So we've got the sea, we've got the cliff. As I said, this may have to be lightened when we put this in, but it's easy to do. Now we're going to do the little path that comes down here. Now remember, it's not a motorway, okay? It's a little tiny little path. We're going to put some shadows across it. Everything's going horizontal. And as long as you do it in horizontal, it's going to work. Patchy little bits of dark. Come to my white little bits of white. We're going to do the path and then this is going to overlap it. We're just making it horizontal, which will just make it into a flat surface. And now and again, there were little puddles on it. So here and there, we're going to make our white a little bit harder. Create those little puddles across the path. That will be the path done. Now we can move to this bank. And just the same as we did in the acrylic and in the pastel, you're going to start with the dark. I've got my slightly thicker bit of charcoal. I'm going to make some grassy shapes along the edge. And I'm going to put it on its side and make big dark shapes. See the, see the darks down here? Darks in the grasses here. And all the time you're making those shapes, you're going to be thinking grass, so that everything goes uppy downy. Uppy downy shapes all the time. And I'm not covering it, remember the chalk's going on top. Getting some background. It's just the same as putting in the darks first in your pastel. And here and there I'm going to make sure it overlaps the path. Get a bit of dark background and always a dark corner. I do like my dark corners. And having put that in, we'll go back to the chalk and we're going to bring up some nice grasses with the chalk. You don't have to cover everything. You're doing an impression. Sometimes the chalk's going to be on the side so it colours in. Sometimes it's going to be on the tip to make sharp marks. Sorry, my words always leave me. Don't forget this little bit behind the path. Little grassy bit going along. There's nothing wrong with pushing it in now and again as well. Make it a little bit softer. Come back in with some white. Think grasses. So sometimes you're filling it in with the side of the pastel, but always, always, always thinking little grassy strokes and let's take some just some nice long trailing lines through it. Remember it isn't exactly this. Sometimes it's not even close to this but it's an exciting picture which is what we want. There will also be some flowers here in with the grasses so let's bang them on. I'm going to bring up a little more dark here and again this is a lovely thing you just go over and over and over charcoal and chalk bring up the edge of my path a little bit and maybe take some grasses over it a bit 
more dark is nicer. Build it up until it's how you want it. Some on the side, some on the tip. Bring up that feel of little, they're sort of little mounds of grass, which is the effect I'm trying to get. And you can see because of the texture, it comes in front of the seed. And if you're going to put these little flowers on it, make sure that then they're random. Okay? You don't want them evenly spaced everywhere. And that will be the left-hand side of the path completed. left hand bank done. I've brought up a little bit more dark around the edges of the path and I've taken a couple of these dark lines over the so you can see the grass is growing into the path here and there because it mustn't be the motorway. Now we're going to do the same on the right hand side. Start with my charcoal, get some really dark edges but they're not going to be everywhere. What we don't want is a completely black line around it. And because this is quite dark, we're going to have lots of white in front of it. So I'm looking where's the dark within here, where's the shadows. Put them on, thinking always, always thinking grassy shapes. And sort of, again, it's like doing that little dance over your paper, making them look attractive, even when it's only the first coat. Let's get the feel of the mounds of grasses. So they're sort of going in these shapes. And we want a fair bit of dark down here by the path. Always thinking about the little grassy shapes. Putting in some hard edges as well. And a dark corner. Okay, and a little bit up here, I think. We've got to have some. And now I'll go into my light. Come all the way down to the path. Get some fields of grasses. Some grasses coming along here. And let's get this edge sorted out up here. I want really sharp white on this edge so that it comes in front of the cliff behind it. So I'm really using the edge of my pastel, the tip rather, sorry, to make some really white grasses. Oh, is that a bit too steep? Oh, do you know what? I'm going to get rid of that top bit. It's going a bit big, I think. You can always rub it out. Nothing wrong with going wrong. Now I'm going to come back down in a bit. I think that was a little bit too much of a good thing going on up there. That's better, that's a nicer shape, isn't it? Otherwise it felt like it was soaring off up to the sky. Same thing on this side, I'm going to use it sometimes on the side so it blocks in some areas. And sometimes on the tip. And always thinking of the way the grasses grow, that they grow in mounds going down to the path. So my picture is here and although this isn't copying it, it's always there for me to have a look what happens to things. And let's use a sharp edge to make some of these nice long lines going through it which are always attractive. A bit more on the side, create those mounds of grasses. The dark areas are really good for getting some little flowers in because they'll really show and some little sharp lines. And working our way back towards the path with some flowers and some little sharp lines. Try to create some sort of differences in the areas so you've got shadow bits where it feels like the grasses are going in and you've got lit areas where you really want to see a little bit of detail and 
let's put a little bit of lines again coming over the path. The path wants to be there, but it's definitely not a motorway. Taking some little sharp lines across it. And the same with the black. Take some little lines across it and maybe some little dots. And we've got a little coastal path in charcoal and chalk. Enjoy!